This entire course is about working on XRP Ledger. So before moving further, I thought it will be wise to have a brief introduction of XRP Ledger. So let's switch to livenet.xrpl.org. This is visual representation of what's going on in the network. In this case, live network. This is where the real value transfer transactions are going on. We can switch between live network or testnet or development network. For now, let's stay on live network and see some of the things present on this page. So let me pause this. And the first obvious thing is average transaction fee, which is 0.001184 XRP. It's in XRP, not in US dollars or euros. And it's currently handling 23 to 24 transactions per second, but it can handle up to 1500 or 1500 transactions per second. Now, what is this in the middle? That is average ledger interval and average transactions per ledger. Each block or box in this on this website represents an individual ledger. If you take a closer look, each closed ledger has a ledger index or ledger sequence number that is one higher than the previous ledger. In this case, 905, 906, 907, 908, 909, and so on. Each ledger has a unique ledger index or ledger sequence number. It also has unique hash. For now, let's only concentrate on ledger index number or ledger sequence. Please remember this term ledger index or ledger sequence number. Now let's take a look at this ledger. It has 83 transactions and each transaction paid 0.026 XRP as transaction fees. And these are the transactions. But what are these colors? If you just hover over these individual colors, you can see the transaction types in this case, trust set, account set, payment, etc. So clearly XRP ledger supports more transaction types than just the payment type. While we are at this, let me even explain three states of a ledger, which is open, closed and validated. The RippleD server makes a distinction between ledger versions that are open, closed and validated. So this is important. A server has only one open ledger and any number of closed but unvalidated ledgers and an immutable history of validated ledgers. If this sounds complicated, let me give you an analogy and try to help you understand this. Think of a train station. You can't get into a train which has already passed the platform you're standing, right? And at any given time, there can only be one train at the platform. So think of the train at your platform as a open ledger. There can only be one train on a platform at a given time. Once all the passengers get into the train and after a while, the doors of the train closes and the train starts moving slowly. Consider this as a closed ledger. You are not yet at your destination. And if you hold a invalid ticket, somebody might come and check and might force you to get down the train in, in the next station or midway they might realize that the entire compartment is damaged and they might ask the whole population inside the compartment to get down and climb another compartment. Anything might happen, right? And there is another state which is validated ledger. That is the train reaches the destination. That is you reached your destination. That's it. You made it. That's final. You can't undo it. Okay. So that's like validated ledger. That is immutable history of validated ledger. Now, don't worry if you didn't understand it, but what you need to understand at this point of time is each ledger is identified by its unique ledger index or ledger sequence number. And each ledger has certain set of transactions inside it, which might get validated or the transactions might even fail, which is of different topic. Now getting back to this stats, so the average transactions per ledger is 100 to 101 here. And the time interval between these ledgers, closing ledgers is four seconds. So according to our analogy, trains are arriving at the platform at an interval of four seconds. So with this basic understanding, let's switch to test network and see what's inside it and why we need it in the first place. The working, the stats and everything else is same as we saw in the live network. And the only major difference is 
the tokens we generate on test network do not hold any value at all. We can generate it freely and transfer it to anyone freely. It doesn't hold any value because anyone can generate it. Now, why do we even need this? Why do we have to maintain different servers like live network, test network, etc.? That's because it's good for us, the developers. It's good for you guys because we try to develop some things and think of a situation where you have a logical error wherein you send 100,000 XRP where you have to send only 10,000 XRP. The transaction is final. You can't undo it. It's a huge damage, right? It's like testing your application in production, which is not good. So we need to use test network and these fake XRP coins. You distribute it the way you want it. You test it, you do the transactions, and if there is anything wrong, just fix it. Once everything is tested and works fine, switching it to the live network is just changing one line of code, okay? It's that easy. So that's why while in development, always use test network coins. In the next video, let's see how we can generate an XRPL account on the testnet and how we can generate fake XRP on the testnet. And let's also see how we can activate a pre-generated XRP account and activate it on the testnet.